The uh, speech that we were waiting for, both on behalf of President Joe Biden and also Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky, they're at the G7 summit talking about that bilateral security agreement that they came to, they just signed, uh, giving, oh, there you go, arm in arm. I, I mean, I think that says everything right there, both of them supporting each other, as of course the U.S. has been a tremendous ally in this fight against Russia, sending weapons, sending money. Uh, the president clearly hasn't wavered when it's come to supporting Zelensky. Uh, let's get to our foreign correspondent, Patrick Rievel. He is there at the G7 summit. Also, our senior White House correspondent, Selena Wang, was right there uh, in uh, the first couple of rows as they gave that speech. Our national security and defense analyst and former deputy assistant secretary of defense for the Middle East, Mick Mulroy, also with us. Mick, if you don't mind, I have a quick question because I noticed it right away and I was talking to my producers. But as soon as the president started to speak, it sounded like we heard he above in a situation like this isn't that odd it's supposed to be a no-fly zone I'm curious what that could have been about so Kira it seemed very odd to me they are not only should not be helicopters above the president of the United States but they were in an it looked to me like an open-air situation so it was even more uh, troubling quite frankly and it sounded as if they went right over them so i don't know all those to be true bob just what i observed and i do think uh you were right that that really did seem uh to be an odd situation and one that should not have happened yeah kind of uh it was and you could sort of see a pause too uh in the, in the president saying let's wait for a moment and anyway all right stay tuned we'll try and figure out what that was all about okay uh, patrick let's get right to you then and just talk about um this bilateral security agreement it is now signed uh what will be the first move will it be this 50 billion dollars in frozen russian uh, assets uh that will start uh making its way toward ukraine uh what are your thoughts on what the first move will be Hi, Kira. Yeah, I mean, as I was, was listening to the president there, I think, you know, that he basically said that the message he was trying to send with the steps around this summit was that Vladimir Putin will not be able to outweigh the U.S. and its allies. It will not be able to divide them. And so really, there's a, a full package that they're trying to send here. The first, as you say, is the security agreement. It's a bilateral security agreement that lasts for 10 years between Ukraine and the United States. That agreement um, is basically pledging to help Ukraine develop its ability um, to defend itself and to continue doing many of the things the U.S. is already doing. The second thing, as you say, is this $50 billion loan um, that the White House has managed to agree with other G7 leaders um, to provide to Ukraine. And that loan is going to be backed um, by frozen Russian assets, using the profits being generated by these hundreds of billions of dollars of frozen Russian assets. And I think, you know, it was notable to hear President Zelensky say um, that this security agreement was historic. And I think it is worth pausing for a moment and thinking quite how significant it is and what a long way Ukraine and Russia, have, uh, Ukraine and the United States have come um, over the last two years, in the past decade, really, that they've now got this security agreement, which, yeah, does make some very remarkable ple uh, pledges. It says that in the event that Ukraine is attacked again, um, the U.S. will hold consultations at the highest level with Ukraine within 24 hours. Of course, what it does not do is does not commit um, the U.S. to send troops to Ukraine. It is not committing the U.S. to an alliance with Ukraine in the same way that it is in the, with NATO. Um, it, what it is about is trying to develop Ukraine's own ability to defend itself. Uh, there are also a couple of, I think, interesting questions to President Biden. One of them was about this decision recently to allow Ukrainian forces to start using American weapons to strike inside Russia, across the border, in particular from Kharkiv, where Russia launched this massive offensive trying to push towards the city there, towards Ukraine's second city. As we know, a couple of weeks ago, um, President Biden authorized the Ukrainians to finally begin striking just across the border. He said that his position has not changed. Uh, they will only allow the Ukrainians to do that, to strike in the areas around the border and not allow deep strikes into Russia itself. That position hasn't changed. But I think um, the most notable thing here is, is that, again, this is an attempt by the Biden administration to say to Russia, you will not outlast us, and to try and put the Ukrainian support for Ukraine on a longer-term footing. Kira? 
All right. And uh, while they were talking about this security agreement and the war in Ukraine, uh, of course, uh, there was a reporter that took advantage to ask uh, President Joe Biden about his son, Hunter Biden, uh, found guilty on those gun charges just before the president headed to the G7 summit. Let's take a listen to that moment. I'm extremely proud of my son, Hunter. He has overcome an addiction. He is he's one of the brightest, most decent men I know. And uh, I am satisfied that I'm not going to do anything. I, sa I said I'd abide by the jury decision. And I will do that and I will not pardon him. It's what he has had uh, prior uh, to to arriving at the G7 summit. But Selena, you were there. Um, uh, just rose uh, behind where the president gave that speech side by side with President Zelensky. Your thoughts on the fact that a question question was thrown out about Hunter Biden. How was that received? Yeah, well, Kira, look, the president only took questions from two reporters. Then Zelensky also took questions from two of the Ukrainian press and, of course, took this chance, this rare chance to ask the president about some domestic issues, including his thoughts on his son, Hunter Biden. Now, this is the first we've heard him on camera talk about his thinking around the decision that was made by the jury. The president also, at the very end, after he wrapped up, I asked the question about whether he would commute his son's sentence. He was also asked by another reporter. He heard the question and he said, no. That is significant because a big question has been, okay, he has ruled out pardoning his son, but would he reduce that sentence? Again, the president only taking questions from two reporters. All right. And after that, of course, it got back to the bilateral, bilateral security agreement. Your thoughts on that, Selena? Yeah, Kira, I mean, this was a big show of solidarity on the global stage. Just moments ago, you had the president of Ukraine and President Biden. They were signing this historic bilateral security agreement. This is supposed to last for 10 years. Now, it does not commit U.S. troops to defend Ukraine, but it does commit the U.S. It pledges the U.S. to bolster Ukraine's defenses, not just for this war, not just in the short term, but the goal is to help bolster Ukraine's defenses going well into the future to deter any future Russian attacks. It would also involve U.S. forces continuing to train the Ukrainian forces. It would also just increase and enhance interoperability between U.S. intelligence and Ukrainian intelligence. A big part of this entire summit here at the G7 has been President Biden trying to future-proof American leadership and American support for Ukraine. There's a lot of anxieties among G7 countries here, among U.S. allies, about what's going to happen after the November elections, what's going to happen if Donald Trump is elected. He's been very unclear if he would con continue U.S. support for Ukraine. Ukraine. And even this agreement that was just signed between Zelensky and President Biden, well, a future president could withdraw from it. So the president is trying to find as many ways as possible to try and ensure that support regardless of what happens. In addition to that, the president had outlined new sanctions that are going to be put on financial institutions, the secondary sanctions. And of course, we can dig more into that $50 billion loan that President Biden has been pushing for months. And that was actually years in the making. Kira. Mick, it seems that Ukraine is truly benefiting about what's happening uh, here or benefiting from what's taking place there at the G summit. Absolutely. It's a show of solidarity behind Ukraine against Russia, and it's exactly what needs to happen right now. I did think it was really interesting how President Zelensky really focused on this being a bridge to NATO. Uh, Ukraine has been asking to be in NATO for 14 years, and some would argue if they had been allowed in it, there wouldn't be a war going on right now. But that is something that it, I think uh, Ukraine, and it's in the text, apparently, of this agreement that it's this is where this is heading. So if they can hold off Russia, if they can fight back and actually end this war, then I think that would be the next step. But this was a very important, as uh, President Zelensky said, bridge to that uh, to that effort.